This is a Cholig, and this is the, the home of the Manx cottage. This is where everything happened traditionally. These styles of Cholig's we have in the Isle of Man, they're very similar to what you'd get in Scotland or Wales, but not in Ireland. Ireland didn't have these type of uh, Cholig's. So they are very, very particular to the Isle of Man. And to put it into our own vernacular buildings, is, um, it really is quite unique. And um, they're, they're, they're wonderful items. They're, they're, they're like fitted kitchens. So it's not only for the family, it's not only for, co for cooking, it's also you bring your livestock in, you'd have cock lofts and stuff, and uh, there's a lot to it, because it's, um, you know, it's a long winter in the Isle of Man, and uh, you know, you gotta, sometimes you've just got to bring those precious animals in with you, and they've got to stay the night with you. So um, with the fire going, and of course it wouldn't be a roaring fire, there'd be gore, bundles of gorse going, but they burn really hot, but very quickly. So most of the time it would be a peat fire that was here, so just smouldering away, very smoky. I'm a, I'm a stonemason. We um, specialise in um, traditional works, uh, particularly for vernacular buildings such as, such as this. And uh, we run the Stone and Lime Company. There's a gang of five of us, so we can get through quite a bit of work. And occasionally we get to build something new. So we're up here on the, the borderlands of um, Russian and Arbery. And um, we're in this Tholton here and we're gonna, we're rebuilding a, a Cholig. And the style that we're doing in is particular to Ronig and in Arbery. So these upstarts of granite, and then um, we have these uh, throughs which go into the gable end to hold the, uh, the lintel on. Um, the style that we've taken this from was from a house that was built in 1740. So, you know, we're, we're talking about 280 year old sort of inspiration to um, bring this type of uh, vernacular build back to uh, this area. So it's quite unique. We've just got the one oven. Sometimes they'll have two in the bottom, but we've created this oven here and arguably they behave like a pizza oven. So you'd get your, your gorse bundles in there, get it really hot. You'd probably have to do that several times because the gorse burns really quickly. Then you'd use your latent heat to get your, your buns or your bread in there. You'd seal it up and um, then hopefully you'd have some bread by the end of the day. And down at the Balamadral, Balamadral farmhouse, uh, the late Jeff Comish, who was all things Ronig, he always used to refer to the oven there as the goose oven. We never really knew why. And um, it was only recently that I realized that the, um, when it comes to, uh, to cleaning out your house and cleaning out your ovens, you'd use a goose feather. So there was a lot of truth in what he said. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> these pieces, uh, these are the tallest we could actually get. This one's from Balacanal, just over the fields, just across the Colby River. This one is a lintel from Balaqueston in, um, church bends and these two are peel curb stones so we've picked these up in Solby so they've traveled the length of the island to get back to the south. Part of the challenges of this stone is like like with any uh, vernacular build you're, you're using the material that's actually to hand and we think the reason why th um, we've got a little croft here with a cup two barns and a farmhouse um, is because there's a rocky outcrop just just right next to us, next to the barn. And of course, wherever there's a rocky outcrop, that's where you're gonna start quarrying. Cause you don't have to dig for it. You don't wanna be digging for stone. So I think the location of this place is due to that rocky outcrop. And just like a lot of rocky outcrops, the stone isn't actually that good. So it's, it's rough material to work with. So, um, so you've really got to use all your skills and your knowledge to actually to, to get it all to knit together. So um, that's the biggest challenge. As we can, we can see, um, some of this material really is quite good, but a lot of it is very gnarly. You know, it's, um, it's poor stone. Um, we've got a lot of igneous material, which is, um, what we use, which is field clearance, et cetera. But a lot of it has just come from that rocky outcrop. It's really great that these clients want, want this doing into their vernacular build. Um, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get to build another one like this. So. <laughs>